When I was a young man doing some research at Stanford, one of the people I got to meet was Esther Lederberg, whose husband won the Nobel Prize, and by all rights, she should have shared that Nobel Prize with him. But she told me about the parties they used to have back in those days when all of these founders of molecular biology would get together and they would have these epic parties. And all of the people who were in the research would be all talking and stammering over what was going to happen in the future as they were determining how DNA would become molecular biology and solve diseases in the future. She would describe how they would get together, they would talk over one another, and all the people who weren't scientists would be off just having a gay old time drinking and listening to music and dancing. But these guys were practically spitting on each other. They were so excited as to what the future would bring. And interestingly enough, when I was doing some background research about this topic, which is about messenger RNA virus vaccines, I was looking over the history of it, and it talked about this epic party. This epic party that occurred in Francis Crick's house. Now, Francis Crick won the Nobel Prize with James Watson for the discovery of the structure of DNA. But again, same thing. All these people together, excited, talking, and all of the people who were their spouses or significant others who were not in molecular biology were off drinking champagne, listening to music. And these guys were all together drawing things out on blackboards and all excited while everybody else was having, you know, a party. Well, guess what? It's 2020, and while it has been a crummy year, this is the year when all of the things those people were thinking about, all of the promise of molecular biology has come true. And that's the story I'm going to tell you today. My name is Dr. Terry Simpson, and this is Your Doctor's Orders. Busting myths and spreading science virally. Probably by the time this comes out, the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine will have been approved, and the anti-vaxxers will say, oh my God, mRNA, it's going to intercalate in your DNA and you're going to change. Have you ever noticed when people say you're going to change, it's always in a bad way, they never say you're going to change and you'll be like Spider-Man. They always say you're going to change and grow a horn or something. Anyway, first of all, that's not the way it works. But I want to tell you why this was such an important scientific breakthrough that brought the promise that all of those people, all of whom, by the way, have long gone and are deceased, saw. So what is messenger RNA? So you probably know that for you, your code, your program that determines everything in your body is DNA. And DNA sits in the nucleus of the cell. But to make proteins, the DNA doesn't make proteins. It sends a little carbon copy of itself out on something called RNA, exports it out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell, and it makes protein. That's how you make protein. And these scientists had this idea 50 years ago. 50 years ago, that if you could take those little bits of mRNA and put them into human cells, you could make the human cells make whatever protein they needed to make and solve and cure a disease that wasn't able to make that protein. That's what happened. The messenger RNA is exactly that. These vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna are vaccines made of messenger RNA. So what happened is within a month, within a month, of having this virus, we had the genetic code of the virus that we had it out. And then we found the part of the virus, that little spike part that you see on the virus, the part that's responsible for getting the virus into our cells. We knew what protein that was. We had the code for it. And what these brilliant scientists did is they made it into messenger RNA. They packaged it into this little globule of fat and they're able to inject it in your body takes that globule of fat, brings it into a cell, the messenger RNA is released, it makes copies of this specific protein, and then your body makes antibodies against that protein. It sounds kind of neat. Here's why that's important. Because when you're making antibodies to the specific part of the virus, you have a high chance of getting a very effective vaccine. And it is. For those of us who know about this field and how exciting it is, and now you, the listener, mRNA, we can specifically say, 
what part of the virus we want to make antibodies to, and it can make antibodies to it. Now, I want you to contrast that with influenza virus. How do we make a vaccine from influenza? We grow the virus in eggs, we kill the virus, and we inject it in people. And your body makes antibodies against that virus. But it's really nonspecific. And by that, I mean I want you to think of Star Wars. Do you remember on the first episode of Star Wars where all these little tiny cruising ships were going up and fighting the big mothership? What was that big mothership called? I have a producer here who knows Star Wars. What was the big ship called that they had to hit? The, was it a Millennium Falcon or something? I don't know. Anyway, Han, that wasn't Han Solo. It was Luke Skywalker was the one who used the force and put his little ship in the right position and dropped his bomb in the specific area of that ship and the entire ship blew up and they won against all odds because it went to a specific part in that ship. Now, there were plenty of other cruisers out there. Most of them got slaughtered, by the way, from the Empire, but they were trying to hit the hull of the ship and the windows of the ship and the deck of the ship, and they didn't do hardly any damage, or they did some, but not enough. The ship is like the virus. The specific place in the ship that we want to hit is like that one in a million shot that Han Solo got. Not Han Solo. I get these guys mixed up. Luke Skywalker got... And that's what we can do with molecular virology today. We know the very specific place in that virus that produces the best way of neutralizing the virus, the best way of keeping the virus from entering your cell, the best way that we can have antigens against the virus, and we can make it. Your body actually makes it. And then your body makes antibodies to it. So if you get infected with the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus that causes COVID-19, it goes against that very specific place, just like Luke Skywalker hits the specific place on that battleship. Or maybe it was the Empire Strikes Back and a Death Star. I don't know. Either way, it's that specific. So do you think we're excited about this? Oh, yeah. Those of us who have been watching the field of molecular virology and biology for years and thinking back of those founding people, Watson and Crick, and Letterberg, all of those people who made these discoveries and figured out how it works that were thinking this someday can happen, it happened in 2020. And if it didn't happen in 2020, COVID-19 would be a pandemic that would be worse than the Spanish flu. And by 2021, it would have killed more people on the planet Earth than the Spanish flu did. And somehow these guys, way back when, saw it and knew that they could do this. And thankfully, the technology has now caught up so that 50 years later, we have an answer. Now, it's not going to stop with COVID-19 because you know what the next vaccines we're going to make are? The next vaccines we're going to make are very specific vaccines against influenza. So instead of having 50% efficacy when you get the flu shot, now it'll be 95%. Do you know what that means? We can start talking about wiping out influenza types in the world, especially if we can have the anti-vaxxers decide to get vaccinated. And let's really be clear about this. We can manufacture this type of vaccine quickly, very, very quickly. It's not like growing virus in eggs and purifying it and doing it. This is very quick in labs. And it will not cause autism and it will not give you a third horn, but it will give you spider powers. Well, maybe not. The mRNA vaccines, the one by Pfizer, the one by Moderna. I can't wait to get that shot. That is a shot in history. And I can't be more excited for what this has brought and for all those people I've read about in textbooks and all that little insight that I had in their parties and how excited they were, they're all not resting in peace now. They are all as excited as hell, because maybe that's what they are, because they're scientists after all, that we've done it. We've gotten there. We have made it. And it's only going to be better. So don't thank any politician for this. 
thank the people who funded through the NIH basic research that everybody was saying, oh, we can't fund basic research this frog mating season. All of those funny studies that people made fun of, they led to this. All right. Vaccine's coming. Take it. Get it. Stand in line. Until then, wear a mask. Thank you for listening to Your Doctor's Orders. And while I am a doctor and a virologist and like to play with DNA and RNA and all that, I am not your doctor. And you should always seek the advice of a trusted licensed medical provider. But while I've got you here, let me give you this advice. Get the vaccine. Get it. But until then, stay home, wear a mask if you go out, wash your hands a lot. This podcast is a part of Your Doctor's Orders Network and is produced and distributed by our friends at Simpler Media. My executive producer is the lovely, talented, beautiful, masked and hand-washed producer girl of Producer Girl Productions who likes doing podcasty things. You can follow me for more information and snarky tweets on Twitter where I am at Dr. Terry Simpson. That's D-R Terry Simpson. Until next time, don't drink the water, drink the wine. Hey, Evo. Can you tell I'm kind of excited by this mRNA stuff? I mean, you know, think we can molecularly make the best wine now because we can break it. Oh, I'm just going off, aren't I? So I take it it's the wine that you are blaming on the fact that you went off script and didn't follow format. <laughs> but hey, I get it. You're excited. And we all should be, right? Woohoo!